And on that note, while we've got a lot more to talk about, there's actually somebody waiting online with a question that actually kind of mirrors a little bit of what we're talking about. We've got, um, is it Stefan in Brooklyn? Uh, yes. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thanks I'm for not... calling. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, I would have called at least a month ago. So, uh, but I'm just calling on a different note, different from what was called for last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not even from a scientific point of view. I just want to know, what were the basic reasons for um, your acceptance of, acceptance of atheism? Oh, um, I, I have a slight problem with the terminology, but I'll skip that just to answer your question. And, and the answer is that religious claims failed to meet their burden of proof. It's, if I may, it's not that we accept atheism, because you're, ta you're talking about accepting a non-belief. How, how about rephrase it? Uh, our, our rejection of a belief means the same thing, I suppose. Uh, you're suggesting that we believe in something that was never indicated. Until it is indicated, I can't believe it. I mean, you can make up any number of things that might come to your imagination, but when you posit them as true, it is incumbent upon you to produce a reason why we should believe that that is true. And, and, and by you, he's speaking, you know, broadly. Yeah. Uh, the, the terminology thing that, that I have a problem with is something that he just touched on, and I think one of the best explanations I ever heard um, came from Dennis, and it's when you, when you phrase it that way, like what made you accept atheism, or as some dishonest uh, people have tried to argue, you know, show me the proof for atheism. Um, it's not, it, it, that portrays this as if atheism is some ideology that's selling something. As atheists, it's not that we're selling something else other than religion, it's that we're not buying what religion is selling. And just because I'm not buying this doesn't mean I'm selling something else. It simply means I'm not buying that. You know, it's funny, you're saying exactly the same thing you said the last time I were here. You mean the questions haven't gotten any better? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, we, we end up dealing with a lot of the same questions and issues over and over again, partly because the audience changed and partly because for some reason there's a difficulty in grasping some of these topics, you know, with, with a broader audience. So what, what else do you have, Stephen? Stephen? Uh, what, what are the burden of proofs that we haven't met? Um, that's what I want to know. Well, um, anything. I mean... You have a belief system that is dependent upon faith, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, faith is an assertion of absolute conviction that is assumed independent of evidence and which must be defended against all evidence to the contrary. Right, but my reason for asking that is because in the last show, Matt well, said my that answer is not based on evolution. Uh, my answer is that the belief in a God is, re requires faith. Anything that requires faith in lieu of evidence is, uh, in my philosophy, automatically rejected. It has to have evidence. There has to be something to indicate it. Right, but, and the evidence that you're talking about, you're talking about science, right? Well, yes. Okay, but what I'm saying is last show, Matt had indicated very well that his atheism is not based on evolution. Correct. I, evolution is irrelevant to whether or not I'm an atheist because evolution deals with one question, the origins of biological diversity, and theism addresses another question as to whether or not there is a God. And while I will admit that there are people who link the two and that there may be different ways to link the two, my rejection of theism is because the theistic claims did not satisfy their burden of proof. And it has nothing to do with whether or not I accepted evolution. And by the way, the demonstration of this is that there are plenty of theists, Christians of all stripes, who do accept evolution because it's a fact that's demonstrated by evidence. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's, but it's, it's very incoherent for theists to accept um, evolution according to common descent from, you know, as Darwin described it, because they call it an undirected process. If... God is direct, and it doesn't make sense to say that it's undirected. I agree. Well, if anything else that happens in your life, I mean, any any trivial in, uh, 
collection of instances that seem unrelated that might ultimately lead you to a certain conclusion. You, would, you might think that God was looking out for you and God arranged for these things to happen so that you would be in this place at this time and it was so fortuitous it had to have happened for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. So if that's the case, then evolution, although it seems completely undirected, could well have been orchestrated by whoever wrote the script for the existence of everything. I mean, he's got everything all laid out. He's written the prophecies, already told us how the movie ends. So how does this deviate uh, from, from your perspective? Why can't a God who organizes every single thing organize every single thing? Well, okay, well, I'm still, I'm still on my, I still haven't gotten off what, what are his reasons for evolution, because he's saying that, you know, that his atheism is not based on evolution, but he just keeps, you know, buzzing to say that it's just based on that we haven't met our burden of proof. Correct. Yes, so, and we need to make it. We need to, proof. You have to tell me because proof indicates evidence, and evidence. No, no, no. Proof doesn't indicate to... evidence. We need to work on some definitions here. First of all, evolution is population mechanics. Okay, that's it. It's it's reproductive populations and genetics. That's all you're talking about. That has nothing to do with whether or not we believe that all events are orchestrated by some higher intelligence, or that there are anthropomorphic entities with magic powers. They're completely different subjects. When we say that you haven't met the burden of proof, we are saying that you declare that your belief is based on faith and that we must have faith to believe as you do. No, I don't have faith. I won't have faith. I consider it inherently dishonest. Do you have something more substantive? Do you have a reason why I should believe you? And. Um. Right, so yours, I know, yours is based on a scientific point of view, but that's not what I'm dealing with. Okay. Can then, you answer that question with a yes or no? Here, here's your thing. You're, you're saying, where haven't we met the burden of proof? And, and our answer is, is everywhere. So w what is something that you believe that you are convinced you have met the burden of proof? That's what you have to tell me what. Is Wait! No, no, no! <laughs> I asked. I asked you a question. Well, you you believe, you, Stefan? Dependent upon science. What is it dependent upon? Answer the question with a yes or a no. Hang, Do hang, you on, hang on. Let me ask that one more time. I'm not honestly answered my question. Uh, ask that question one more time because I missed it. I'm saying that if your atheism is not dependent upon evolution. Which is to say, you know, if you're not looking at it from a scientific point of view. No, that's not what you asked. That's not what you asked, Stefan. Just a second ago, now you're asking if my atheism isn't dependent on evolution, what's it dependent on? And a minute ago, you asked if my atheism isn't dependent on science, what is it, what is it dependent on? Um, my rejection of theistic claims is based on skepticism, logic, reasoning, the evaluation of evidence, and the theistic claims have not provided evidence sufficient to justify accepting them. Oh, that's it. I'll go a step further. What you have provided has been entirely falsified. Every claim that religions have made, where there could be tested at all, they have been disproved. Um, you know, where you claim that, uh, let's say, religion is supposed to make you more moral, then if that is the case, then why is it that evangelicals have uh, the higher divorce rate? than you know, non-religious people? Why do they have higher teen pregnancies? Why do they have more abortions? Why do they have higher rates of, of child abuse? Why is it that statistics show that, uh, that uh, sexual offenders more often than not tend to be religious and that the more religious they are, the more heinous their crimes are? I mean, that's just one example. There is a negative correlation to all the claims that I have ever seen regarding religion. So it's not just that you didn't provide a reason to believe you, it's that you've presented me with a whole bunch of reasons not to. So are you looking at it from a moral standpoint then? I would, that was one of my many standpoints, yes. Right, so my...